Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Sabayan from your COP1000 online class. And I'm doing this video to clarify a couple of questions that was addressed via email, um, especially on registration and Cengage um, and doing some of the classwork assigned. So currently, I am logged into Blackboard. Let me just log out. And you know what? I'm going to start over. Once you go to the website, right at the bottom, right at the top part of your screen, it says Blackboard. I will go ahead and log in, and it should show how many courses you have at the very top. Okay? Let me select one right here, which is COP1000. It doesn't matter if you are on my 5.8 or 6.0 class. And let me go through a student view so we are the same. On the left part of your navigation pane, you would see dashboard, syllabus, start here, lesson. When you click start here, it shows you my background. The course information is the second one. Gives you description, how you will be graded, what's the method of assessment, and things like that. When you click course schedule, this is the most important part when it comes to the start here. Every single week, you would see what are the things that are due. I will put a special note if it's needed. Let's say, for example, on Lesson 1 quiz, that it doesn't need a Respondus Lockdown Browser um, and the password provided. So if you notice in here, for every single lesson, there's a date at the top. This will be updated every single week for you. Um, and what are the things that you needed to submit for that, okay? The unit test does not require any responses because this goes inside of your Cengage account. And usually it's about 10 to 15 questions for the unit one test. Same goes to unit two or unit three or unit four or, you know, etc. And you have, I believe you have twice to take for that. It will take whichever the highest score or the higher score between the two. Now, lesson one quiz, lesson two, or should I say lesson two quiz moving forward requires responses locked on browser and video. Okay? So please read the special announcement or special instruction folder for testing so you can be guided accordingly when it comes to that. When you click the MindTap course and click launch to that, just in case that nothing happened, let's say you're brand new, you haven't registered anything. Mine obviously shows something on my screen because I have already set up my MindTap. If this is your first time, you would see the screen that you need to create an account, okay? So create an account, and after doing so, you need to provide for the credentials. You will provide for your username, what password you would like, and things like that. After doing so, you can go click out because your main means of your, your platform, should I say, should always go back to Blackboard, okay, because it's already set up in a way that once you click it, it's linked inside of your Cengage, all right? You don't need to go separately log in to Cengage to do things. So after doing so, typically it will show you open course, something like that. But after registration or after you put your access code and things like that, you can close that account. Make sure that you select the right book that you're using for the course as well and then close it. Go back to Blackboard and do this part. So let's say, for example, let me just click Welcome to Course so you can see what is inside. You could click Launch to that as well. But I think this has been done, you know, last week. Most of you are fully aware. What do you mean by Welcome to Course? Brief discussion of the objectives and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, Pre-course assessment has been extended um, until yesterday. It's an extra credit. You do not need to worry if you didn't do that. Um, I'm very particular with due dates. Let me tell you that. 
because I value each other's time. This is a distance course. You can finish the course, you can finish the degree right in the convenience and of your own computer. So I am very particular for the things that needed to be done because you have the entire week to finish it. Okay? It's not like there's something due Monday, there's something due Tuesday, there's something due Wednesday. It's all up to you how you make it work for the entire week. But the last day for you to submit anything or everything is Saturday. I recommend not to go at the edge, maybe do it Thursday or Friday. Because if you have any concern that needs to be addressed right away, and you're doing it at 11.30 in the evening, you know what's going to happen. It's not going to help you. So let's be responsible for those things. Because the fact that you signed up for a distance course, meaning to say, you're extra committed on finishing it because you don't need to go face to face. You do not need to drive to campus. You do not need to go to your classrooms and you can complete the course in your own computer. Okay. Now, pre-course assessment, as I've said, um, was extended until yesterday. For those who did not complete it on time, that was actually a, an extra credit. Now, this part here, the Sengage technical support is also important in case you want to get in touch with them. I also put a link for that, okay? Some of the things, for those who are first-timers in this class, a couple of things on how to be successful when it comes to online um, courses, just read those. ELO 1000, you have a link for this as well, and this is free. This is a self-paced, it's non-graded, it's totally free, so you can experience what an online course be like. This also uses the online Blackboard Learning Management System and some of the tips on how to be successful in distance education. You, you don't need to complete it in two hours. It's like, it, it will show you where you actually stop. And there's a link here how to register if you want to take advantage of those. I highly recommend. If English is not your first language, don't worry too much about that because you're reading anyway. You're, it's all about practice. It's all about, I would say, engaging to your classmates, trying to respond to their, um, their thread, their post, so you, you can get ideas, okay? Um, this is something that I don't want those students that does not have a solid foundation of English, they're quite intimidated, you are more than welcome to, to sign up, you know, with distance learning. It's just a matter of, I would say, really being proactive so that you're not like behind behind in a way that you're trying to access a, let's say, syllabus last minute. And that has been posted months ago. So that's just a piece of advice that I would like to, to share with everybody. May it be face-to-face, -face, may it be online class. Take responsibility for the things that you needed to do. If you have like a vacation to go, I mean the class already started. If it's something emergency, I, I totally get it. I understand. But if you're going to, to put your education on the side and start doing something else, the other, the rest of the class will not wait for you. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's all a matter of where you're going, what are your goals, what are your priorities. And for me, my priority are my classes. My priority is my students. So if that is part of my priority, I expect my students to do the same thing. Because it's all about learning from one another and I would like this class to be successful in a way that you get a ton of information not only from the professor um, but also with your peers your classmates I think your answers are awesome um, I can see some you know are really engaging I, I saw like one student who was able to develop an app already I really commend you for doing that and I was like wow this is this is awesome. So I just want to throw that out in the air because, you know, I read every single post. Okay. 
Now for Blackboard support, you have it here as well. Disability services and things like that. So this is all about start here. But the most important part of this area is the course schedule. This is going to be your guide because you don't see me face to face. So you would know, okay, what's due for this whole week? Oh, it's all about lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. When is it going to be due? Oh, let me count how many things that I needed to do. So you can manage your time. I understand most of you are working, but it's all about time management. Okay. Now, Dr. K, after clicking start here, I saw the due dates. Where should I go? I recommend going to lessons. When you go to lessons, you have your general discussions in here. Um, you will also see the start here, the special testing um, typo, that's testing instructions, and the lessons are visible. So let's say, for example, I click lesson one. It looks like a book. So you have a table of contents on the left, and you have the description on the right side. In everywhere that you go, you will always see this format. It tells you what to do, what are the things that you needed to watch, even how to set up your flash drive. I made a video for that. How to, to do the Blackboard MindTap overview. I also did that video. But I'm doing like a quick run through again, just to make sure that everybody is on board. We're only on lesson two, my dear students. We have a lot of chapters to cover here. So the key for success for this online course is to definitely, you know, you need to keep up. You need to be, I would say, one step advance. If you know that you have a discussion question two, three within the week, maybe have a good start by doing it Monday, Tuesday. Knock down one or two right away and use the third discussion maybe, I mean, at the edge of the week. So things like that. Now, every single time, Dr. K, if I click, let's say, Unit 1 Test, it doesn't do anything if I click click to launch okay let me try that click to launch of course mine there is a window in there okay you can see my window but what I'm gonna do is I will minimize this okay I'm gonna minimize that you see this is my taskbar let's say I would open compiling and executing program you see what happened if I click that and click to launch Nothing happened on my screen. Okay, let me do that again. Click this. I click click to launch. Nothing happened. It went back to the same area. Where did it go? Can you take a look here on your taskbar? Because what happened, there was a window that I opened a while ago. And if I minimize, my typically we minimize or it just went down the taskbar. When you open another window, you didn't notice that it's already there. It's already open. It was just reading it. Okay? So that is something very important. And you're like, okay, let's say, Dr. K, there's, there's really no window. I mean, there was a window, but it's still not doing anything. Can you check your pop-up blocker? I'm using Chrome right now. Mozilla is, is the same thing. You, you can go to to the settings. I would go to the settings. I would go and click advance all the way down. I would go to site settings. There is an area in here that says pop-ups and redirects. Mine is already allowed, which is slide to the right, so I don't have to worry about pop-ups. Okay, but every single time you use a different computer, I mean for the most part, they block it. I mean security reasons. I understand that but these are small troubleshooting that you need to do not only to my class but the fact that you are already on introduction to programming I am expecting that you already you did a good job on your CGS 1100 okay CGS 1100 was Word PowerPoint Excel and Microsoft Access so things like this um, it's, I would say, recommended that the basic things to troubleshoot the computer is definitely, you know, uh, going to help you moving forward. Because you're in a programming class. 
this is not the class for you to just hey just design a newsletter no this is programming my dear students may you be programming maybe network admin cop 1000 is a foundation course and the reason why some of you may probably think that oh she's too hard i would rather have that because once you get higher programming languages you won't be able to really keep up with so many things if you don't develop the right habit at the very beginning and i that's my commitment to my students that's something that i would like them to get the right foundation because this course is one of my expertise i love cop 1000 i love seeing my students being nurtured with this course and the only way for that to be successful because this is an online class is don't wait at the very edge if you need help address it if let's say that person can really help you check whoever who else are available okay the e-learning in the lake worth campus the staff in there they're very very helpful um i already talked to them um even the slc here at lake worth um this is my home campus so I, I do not have any experience to, let's say, Bell Glade or Locks or wherever. But what's important to me is address it right away. Guess what? The class will not wait for you. So it's all about what? What can I do? How can I reach out my professor through email? You know, as much as possible, I could always be there for you. But this is a distance course. We don't see each other every single day or even once or twice a week. So that's the main reason why I'm doing this video is to somehow kind of fix some kinks and all that and certain issues that, you know, needs to be addressed. So I don't make myself too repetitive. You know, I, I hope I'm making, you know, myself clear about that. So I will click, I will, uh, is that I will close that tab. I don't really need it. Now, notice in here under graded items, these are divided into um, areas where you have like, um, what's that, a PowerPoint. If it says read, do me a favor, please read. Okay, I mean, I know that this is a lot, but that's just how it is. If you have not checked your email, you will see um, that I send you a supplement PowerPoint that was i think that was last week and um that's free okay just to let you know that's actually free okay so that is one um what else there's like a visualize they even have flashcards i already did that on a separate video so please do watch that one all the assignments that are due are right here even the summary of what we have covered so far for that course okay now for mind top exercises these are mind top exercises compiling and executing a c plus plus program and for this unit one i actually provided for the solution okay so you can use it as a guide because we just started i this is this course is not language specific for the sake of you know having a good foundation i will cover a little bit of C++ and a little bit of Python at the same time, okay? Um, if I would integrate Java, I think everybody will be crazy having like three, you know, mainstream and all that. So after this course, it will open doors for you for, for many opportunities on taking a C++ course, a C language, Python, C Sharp, Java, Advanced Java, JavaScript, Android programming, SQL, and things like that. But what's important that you're going to learn from this course is the logic of the program. So if you do not have a logic, that's the structure itself. That's how it's being done. That's how you think, making it rational. Because if you don't have logic, that's harder for you to move forward to any language. So that is something that I want to be established from this course. The other assignment in here tells you like an employee payroll assignment. It's clear here that you need to do modification, right? So if it's A and B, then definitely I'm expecting to have two solutions in here. Okay, 
if you're going to just pass one work, then that's that's not going to work. Okay. Now, going forward, if I go to lessons again, I would go to lesson two. Same format. You would have your PowerPoint. You would have your sum exercises in here, practice exercises. There's even a lecture about flogarithm. And I highly suggest you really watch this. Because from this lesson all the way at the end, I mean, majority, you're going to use flogarithm. So please do watch this video. If the question, let's say, for example, this one, there's a homework in here, total sales classwork. It says, please use, let me open that PDF. Please use flogarithm for your solution. I think that's very clear. So if you're not going to use a flogarithm and you plan to use Microsoft Word, or you can use Visio, although that's not free, but you could have a free trial for that, you need to provide for both flowchart and pseudocode. If you're using Flogarithm, why do I recommend it? For one, you don't need to pay for it. It's free. Second, if you have a flowchart already, you generated the flowchart, you can convert that to a Gaddis pseudocode, which we definitely follow. That's the, that's the author of the second book, the supplement book that I send to everybody. That's why it's called Gaddis pseudocode. Or you could convert it into any other language like C++, or I think there's Ruby in there, or PHP, and things like that. So if you submitted a .frpg file to me, or FRG, that's the extension of the flowgarithm, I can see both. I can convert one to the other. I could open the flowchart. I could see the, the, the pseudocode. You know, I will just have to click at the top. But if you're not going to submit a flogarithm solution, um, you need to provide for both. If you're going to use Word, which I think will take a lot of time, I'm just saying it will take a lot of time. Or actually, you could even use PowerPoint, but you know I don't want you to go through with those. It's up to you. Draw.io, D-R-A-W.io is also a good resource because it's free. You could create a flowchart out of there. It's like a tool that is, um, what's that? Uh, pretty much a good platform for that. But what's the advantage of using Flogarithm? For one, you can run the flowchart. There's no other software available in the market that can run flowcharts as nicely as Flogarithm. It's not a perfect software, but it's working. It's doing, you know, the most things that we needed to do for the course. So, I highly suggest you taking a look or checking Flogarithm for your solution, okay? Let me close that. That's the PDF copy. And you have the due date, how many points you have. You could put comments in here and things like that. Um, what else? You have a couple in here, MindTap exercises. When you open a MindTap exercises, make sure that you're also checking Let's say you got a few errors. You need to check the second bottom at the top that tells you, hey, it's expecting to have this input. Run checks again and then run it on the right side of your screen. There's, there's another video for that that you know I highly suggest you watching. Now, let's talk about um, discussion. I could not emphasize this because this is very important when it comes to an online course. It's imperative that you have to check the questions or the guideline how to be able to get a full credit. And let me tell you this, I'm very generous in giving points, but if simple instructions are not being met, then there will be reduction of points. Okay. I'm just saying that your post has to be a minimum of 150 words. You need to respond to two of your classmates and compose a substantial in-depth responses for both. What do you mean by that? If I saw you, hey, I totally agree with what you said. I mean, you can just say anything. But why did you agree? There's always a why. Okay, it's not just, okay, I got you. Okay, noted. Oh, that's a good answer. 
we're all adults here, so we need to have, you know, an in-depth response. You need to include examples for your discussion, okay? You can browse anything on the internet. You could copy anything on the internet. But what matters to me is, did you understand what you have researched? If you're just going to copy and paste everything, that's not really learning at all. So provide for examples for that. It doesn't have to be 10 examples. I'm just looking for one. Um, check your graph. I think, you know, these guidelines are, are just always standard for that. You need to create a thread so that you can view the other threads on that forum. Okay? So that's just one thing because I made an announcement for that and I don't know if all of you saw that. If you did one post or you created a thread from, let's say, lesson one discussion, but let's say um, you did notice that you needed to follow certain things like this all you need to do is to respond to another person and another person and compose for that in-depth response so that is something important what else the summary as well is also um, provided for each of that um, this coming uh, sunday typically in the morning the next lesson will be open for the most part, I do it lesson per lesson, but sometimes I do by batch, like two lessons open right away. Um, again, for the mind tap exercises, I provide for half solution, or sometimes I, I would provide for all of those, open that file. It's up to you whether you want to type it manually, you could copy it, but for me, study it, okay? Most of my students from my COP1000 class, what I do is they would try to put the code first and they don't check the solution that i provided not unless if they can't really figure out how to do it so you can really gauge your or measure your uh, skill when it comes to that okay i think i still have one more to say i totally forgot what it is i'm sure i will remember um what else i think that's it's the most, those are the most important parts when it comes to, you know, this video. And that's the reason why I'm making that video, to address, um, you know, important matters like that. Um, let's try to have a mutual respect and understanding for the course. If your classmate is asking something, I think, you know, that's always the standard. Um, we will see each other for the most part. Um, I, I love interacting with my students, but if I feel that my students are not really, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, and, you know, you're, you're just doing other things in a way that I don't feel that this is your priority, then we're going to have some, some issues along the way, okay? I want everybody to be on board, and I want everybody to graduate with this course with an A. That's my goal for you guys. I want you to have at least, at least, a B or an A. Oh, Dr. K, you're just saying that maybe because you didn't give an A. Oh, I gave an A. Um, in fact, I have a couple of students last semester who even got a perfect 100 for this course. And I have a bunch of 98 and 99 students. So... I hope that clarifies, you know, some, some questions um, from you and uh, if there would be uh, certain things that I needed to address, uh, I will try to make a video for that as well. Oh, there you go. I remember what's the last part that I needed to um, or I'm expecting for everybody. Um, please take time on learning how to create a pseudocode. I saw a couple of solutions already, and I just felt that it was just like being rushed. It was done like, you know, in a way that that person was like really rushing how to do it. What are the guidelines for a pseudocode? Open your your primary book and even your supplement book. Your supplement book is an amazing book. I'm telling you this. You will learn a lot from that, you know, from that um, author. It so happened that there's no software provided for that. That's why I didn't really choose that to be the main book. So 
And then I gave it for free as well. Uh, I was able to download a PDF copy for that. Um, you can even search it on Google as well. Um, you can download a copy. But take a look at the guidelines when it comes to a pseudocode. You need to declare your variables when it comes to... So let's say, for example, I'm going to open a notepad here, okay? Just to address. First things first, you need to have your declaration. So let's say declare um, integer okay, number one. Okay. This is an example of a declaration. If you have two variables and they have the same data type, you can separate them with comma and let's say number two. Unfortunately, in Flowgorithm, you need to do it one by one. Now, so I have declare string or it can be what? Real, um, let's say, um, result. Okay. And there you go. Um, I also forgot to mention here there has to be what um, module name. It can also be stars. Okay. Now, this slash slash in here, meaning to say it's just a comment. Okay. So you can do start because you're creating. For those who are manually doing the, the pseudocode, this is what I'm expecting. I need a module main, main module. Now, you're asking, the, let's say, let's create this one. So you have a direction. Let's say um, a program that allows the user to think of two numbers and display the result or display the sum. Okay? So let's say that's the problem. Okay? First thing is if you want the input from the user, make it interactive. So let's say display. Enter the first number here. Okay. Next, input number one. Next, display. Enter the first or the second number here. Next, input number two. All right. This is a pseudocode. Pseudocode is an English-like you know, command to be able to learn the logic of any program. I know some of you knows how to program, but as a programmer, it's best to really sharpen the apps when it comes to how you really understand what is being asked, okay? Now, it says you need to display the result or the sum. For you to do that, you need to perform an operation, right? So, if I am going to store, you know what, set, set meaning to say you're storing something, okay, or you could actually use the word assign, but set should be fine, uh, set result equals number one plus number two. What does that mean? I'm adding this to, I'm storing it to result. So this one is an assignment operation in a way that it's evaluated from right to left. So if I'm adding here, whatever the result in here will be stored to the variable result. Okay? And if I'm done with that, I need to display again, say, the output or the sum. I can do that. The sum is now comma and the result. So what does that mean? Anything on that double quotation is considered to be string literal. That will be the one posted in your screen. This result is not inside a double quotation because this is the variable. This is the source that you want to be displayed on this line. Okay? I hope that is something. On Flowgorithm, you need to use, I believe there's like a, an ampersand. Um, but I have a separate video for that, so please take a look so you know how, how it works. And, and this is a simple, I would say, pseudocode. doesn't have any other modules inside. I don't think you really need it because this is just a simple one. Just add two numbers and display something. I hope you find this useful because I saw a couple, or should I say majority of the submission, 
you're using a lot of things in your program, but it wasn't even introduced. Meaning to say, you didn't declare it. There has to be a data type. Uh, data types will determine the type of data you're expecting to process. So before you jump into one work or whatnot, solely dedicate a day where you can really sit down and read, watch the video, or you know just review, reinforce, take a look at the flash chart, flashcards. Open your supplement book as well because that provides you a guideline. They, they have a ton of you know, um, in the spotlight examples in there. And you will see that into separate videos too. But I think I, I, I felt that I needed to do this video so that um, I could address as, as many questions as, you know, as uh, I can for, um, for everybody. And I'm a very, um, I would say I'm a very approachable person. I, I'm a very straight too. But please don't take that personally. Why so and so? It's because I would rather have you experience it at the beginning because when you go out, when you take your higher programming courses or when you go out in the field, I have been in the field since the 90s. I was a programmer. I was a systems analyst. Mind you, I started as an encoder. I get so many frustrations because of this and that, but I was able to make my myself up. It's all about, I would say, what your goal is and how do you want to achieve that goal, right? So I want everybody to, I would say, take things, you know, in a way that, you know, it's going to help you finish the degree. Um, I have taught for many universities for a long time. In fact, I'm a university professor. I even taught on the graduate level um, for, I would say, four or five years. All my students were principals of different schools. I was teaching um, the master's level and all that. But it's all about what? I don't mind. I don't, you know, you're, you're double as my age or whatnot. What's important to me is I can share you what I know and what are my experiences that, you know, will contribute for your success. Um, so I, I hope I was able to clarify a couple of things in here. And I appreciate everybody who are very interactive on the discussion board. Um, I can see that you can build a lot of relationships um, from one another. And um, we have a pretty good, we have a strong uh, department you know, moving forward, maybe be network admin or you want to be an engineer or you want to finish so-and-so. Um, I'm very dedicated to how my students learn in my class. So be specific as well. If there's like a, you know, you want to address it to me, you don't want to announce it to the discussion board or whatnot, let me know. I will try my best to establish the first six weeks would be the most important okay if you want to come see me for the first six weeks you want to meet me face to face i have a six-week program here so you can you know you, you want to address it personally um i normally arrive at the campus i'm here at the lake worth campus in the morning i usually arrive between 9 20 in the morning my class starts at 10 o'clock, but you can come and visit me on my first class. I am a TC409409, and, and if you want to chit-chat, you know, or just, you know, I, you're more than welcome to do that. After the six weeks, I will not be, I, I usually am not going to go to campus because I, I don't have any class because, you know, I have a six-week Kind of, what's that called? What's that called? Um, summer A. There you go. An express summer A. That's why I'm here in campus. So if you're interested to, to come, I am usually at TC building. Um, for the most part, my first class starts at 10 a.m. Um, if I'm discussing when you come in, um, maybe wait for a couple, sit down at the back, um, and then we'll talk more than welcome to come visit. 
But after that six weeks, I will not be in campus because, you know, it's an express. So just in case, those who are interested to, you know, just talk about um, things personally, then you're more than welcome to come visit. Again, the staff at the e-learning um, here in Lake Worth campus, um, Shade, her name is Shade, and the other one is Miss Jennifer Bunnell. She's one of the I, uh, instructional design specialists at e-learning. Um, it's right on the first floor of the BA building. They're always there. They're open until, I believe, until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. If you're having issues when it comes to your, your account, um, you can go check some of the tutoring here at Lake Worth. Uh, but Jennifer and Shade are, are going to help you, you know, kind of iron out things. Um, I apologize for having a long video, but I think that this will address, you know, plenty of the questions that uh, need to be done um, moving forward. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I will make another video if it's necessary. Um, you can reach me to my email. That's the best part. Um, I receive some of the voicemail and things like that. It goes right inside of my email. The number that you're actually calling is my office number. And for the most part, I don't, you know, stay in my office because it's summer. <laughs> um, and especially if I'm on my class. So we do not have any summer office hours, unfortunately. Um, but you can always reach me through email. Okay? I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. And thank you for tuning in. Bye.